So there is a groundbreaking new device that researchers say can detect prostate cancer in a man's urine. Dr. Samadhi, um, so what is this test and how does it, does it work? Well, prostate cancer, as you know, next to skin cancer, is the most common cancer among men. 230,000 men die from this. And today, we use blood tests called PSA in order to diagnose prostate cancer. This is a study, Arthel, that's coming from uh, British, uh, from London. And what they have done is they have taken the urine and looking at the gas that comes from the urine. Remember, we had this segment a couple of years ago where the dog was looking at the urine for diagnosis of ovarian cancer. Same concept. Now, through the experiment, they can examine in urine and, and with 95% accuracy, they can say that somebody has prostate cancer. Right now, it's not available for clinical use, but it has a potential that in the future, imagine instead of going through PSA test and biopsy, you can get someone's urine and diagnose prostate cancer. It has potential to revolutionize with certain accuracy that somebody has prostate cancer. And when, can, when will that be available? Well, typically, this takes about two to five years. If Sometimes they may not even pan out, but it's certainly we've seen it with stomach cancer, we're seeing it with ovarian cancer, and it's exciting because I'm in the field of prostate cancer to see something like this. The other issue, as Mark will talk about, and we're having this whole controversy about PSA. Should I get the blood test? Should I not get? A lot of organizations are discouraging people because they're saying the test is not accurate. And that debate should be ongoing with your doctor directly. If you're at high risk, you haven't had PSA, you may want to get a baseline at the age of 40 to know where you stand. Well, you know, Mark, you get the PSA, you go to the doctor, you get that little number. You've been telling me for years, what's your PSA number? What's your P I don't know. I, I've, you know, and you, don't, you got to follow it. And when they give you the piece of paper every year, right, they give you the little piece of paper and it has like number 2.3, you don't know what it means and you don't know, you've got, you got to go get your old papers to like follow your history. Well, first of all, you're not the one that should decide that. Your doctor <laughs> should have some way to guide you. And David and I talk about trend a lot. I'm one of the internists out there that really believes in PSA. It's shocking to find out that since the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force ruled against doing a PSA. Only 16% of internists like me still do it. I do it because I want the knowledge of something is going on in the prostate. Then I follow it over time. The magic number is four. If it's greater than four, I start to get concerned. I might refer the patient to a urologist like David. I want to know the trend. Now, but what, we're, but what we're doing now, though, so I like PSA, Eric, and I like that you know it, but I like better that I know it. <laughs> but, you know, here, we're moving into the arena now where we may have other options on how to screen. MRI is getting better. The tests we're talking about today, we started a year ago talking about how dogs were sniffing out cancer. Now they're making electronic noses yeah. based on the volatile chemicals that dogs found. And dogs have great noses. They built an electronic nose that can find those same cancer chemicals and say with very good accuracy, you have ovarian cancer, you have early lung cancer, you have early prostate cancer. That could be in the office in three to five years, as David right. said. It could be a big, big addition. I, I have to leave it there, uh, mm -hmm. if I may. But I want to let everybody know that we do have, you have the website, prostatecancer911.com. If you have prostate cancer, if you think you have it, you get great answers there. Yep, great information, good advice.